Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Lucha Underground Luchador Spotlight. This is episode six. Moving along a little bit uh, decent pace. Uh, tonight, we're going to be talking about Big Rick, formerly known in WWE as Ezekiel Jackson. Uh, the Lucha Underground Universe's answer to Nick Fury, I think, with the, with the eye patch going on and the big cigar hanging out his mouth. Uh, John, what are your, just a brief little summary of what you think about Big Rick? Big Rick, well, first and foremost, let me say that Lucha Underground got Big Rick right. I feel like WWE, especially during his Intercontinental Championship run, yeah, did you all forget that he's actually a former Intercontinental Champion? I didn't. Um, you know, they tried to make him something more than just a monster. They're, they tried to give him this likability that just seems so fake to me. Lucha Underground looks at this guy, they say, hey, we got a badass, we got a mauler, let's just do him that way. Uh, but the interesting thing with Big Rick is I feel like the first pretty much half of his season was very strong. Um, the second half kind of teetered off for me a little bit, but the way his season ended, you know, the feud that it kind of opened up for season two, at least the beginning of it, I think put a little bit more stock back into him. It was a very teeter-totter season, if you will, for Big Rick. There were points I was really interested and points where I was like, well, they're still using him right. The story isn't just really connecting with me as strongly as, say, his other stuff. What about you, Ashton? Yeah, absolutely. I think with Big Rick, he had a very strong start to the season, but he fell off. And I, I'm looking forward to season two because the very, very, very tail end of season one, literally like the last two episodes and then part two of Ultima Lucha, he looked like the old, like the original Big Rick, like the guy that we started to really get into at the beginning of season one. I hope that season two is a continuation of that because I, I really enjoyed his work at the beginning of the season and then it started to look like he was getting back to his cell, his his usual self, his original self towards the end of the season. And I just want to see that continue into season two. Exactly. I feel like what Lucha Underground really did best was that they kept the character so basic and his, his stories were just extensions of those basic characteristics. Like I'm a guy that beats people up. So my story is going to be any motivation I have to beat a certain guy up. A uh, case in point with the crew, you know, they took my eye out. I'm going to beat the crap out of them. You know, so I, I think, you know, they were very strong with him. It's just, again, not every story connected with as strong a punch as other stories. But yeah, Big Rick, I'm with you. I think his second season could be very interesting. Yeah, absolutely. So let's talk about his season one. And I know that uh, as far as the, the format of this uh, series has been, the first four episodes, we've specifically gone episode to episode and talked about what uh, a person has done in each episode. Uh, but I think that what we did in episode five with the Cuetos, I, I personally prefer that format where we just kind of give a brief overview of the major happenings that went on in that person's season one. So ladies and gentlemen that are listening to this, I would really appreciate it if you would let us know. Which format do you prefer? Do you like it when we go episode by episode so that you can get every little detail of what happened in the person's season one? Or do you prefer the more brief overview that would allow us to make slightly shorter videos at the sacrifice of maybe potentially missing a detail or two? Like I know we had a couple comments in our Cueto episode that we missed a couple of things that happened to him in season one. So I just want opinions. What do you guys think? Uh, I think for this episode, we're going to do more of a brief overview because it's easier to do that for uh, for Rick especially than try to mention every single time he showed up. So, John, when we first start the season, we find out that Big Rick is under Dario Cueto's employ. He is basically Cueto's bodyguard, hitman, whatever, all of the above, really. Yeah, he's pretty much Big Rick's heavy, as I like to call him. Big you Rick know, is Cueto's heavy. Exactly. Yeah. Um. And, you know, we, we find out that he has, I believe it was the $100,000. That was kind of Big Rick's signing bonus, you know, Cueto really wanting to secure him. But, of course, the 100000 becomes, like, the object of allure for uh, quite a few people in the temple, Big Rick included. And but, Johnny yeah, he, Mundo. And Johnny Mundo, yes. Uh, big source of tension there. So, yeah, Big Rick pretty much starts out as Cueto's mercenary, if you will. You know, just, you know, protecting him, taking care of certain obstacles in his way. Uh, and yeah, it was a great introduction for the character, to be sure. Absolutely. Uh, as far as the actual storyline goes, he started out just beating up on Johnny Mundo, trying to get that 100 Gs. Cueto puts the 100 Gs up in a ladder match. I believe Mundo won that, right? 
Yes, he did. So he did. immediately Big Rick is angry. Um, he cuts a promo talking about how he is going to go for the Luch Underground title. And this is, you know, like episode 11, 12, somewhere around there. Talking about how he's going for the Luch Underground Championship and he, he's going to take out anyone that gets in his way. And then he kind of looks back at the other crew members and says, and I mean anyone implying that he would be willing to take them out too and that was the scene if you will that he gets his eye taken out by his own cigar via mr cisco yeah the crew you know it's kind of a full-on mutiny here of big rick they burn his eye out and then i think we don't uh we don't see him for a little bit but we do know later that cueto he's paying off the crew and saying you know it, it's just a shame that big rick uh, couldn't see eye to eye with us, and now he won't be saying anything at all. So it seems like Cueto orchestrated the hit, and the crew carried it out. Yeah. So, you know, very interesting elements there. Absolutely. And I also think that it's worth noting, after this whole thing with the, the eye getting put out thing happened, the next time we see him was that amazing confessional promo. Forgive me, Father, for I'm about to sin. Yes. Yeah, see, it's it's moments like that one where I said Big Rick was so good in the first season, like in these parts, because yeah. that was such an amazing vignette. And I really love the tone that it set. It made you excited about him getting his comeuppance. I just love the whole feel of it. Yeah. Uh, so he cut that promo, and that was amazing. And then he kind of went on a war path trying to get at the, the rest of the crew. But... Sexy Star at this time also wanted a piece of the crew. We talked about her uh, and her match with Big Rick where he didn't want to hurt her. So in the end, he ended up just holding, physically holding her shoulders onto the mat for three seconds to get the pin. And then with a little bit of help from her, he beat the crew three on one. Yes. So Big Rick does get his uh, his redemption. I think Mr. Cisco was last after that Uranagi threw the chair. Yep. Really beat him down. And uh, yeah, so Big Rick gets his comeuppance and he moves on with his and life. And then, uh, correct me if I'm wrong here, John, but I feel like the next time we see him is him taking out Tejano on behalf of Divari, who is his new employer. No! I the trios titles the first. The trios, yeah, the trios title tournament. He teams up with the rest of his family, which is what they call it, just the family. Uh, kill shot, and of course, this is how they introduce the Mac into the situation as well. Yeah, so we see uh, Big Rick, his cousin, the Mac. I think they're both his cousins, aren't they? Both kill shot and the Mac. Uh, uh, I know for a fact that the Mac is. I think kill shot might just be a friend. Okay, okay. So yeah, they go together. They they gun for the gold. They they have success. They make it all the way uh, to the finals of the championship matchup, but the, they kind of falter there. And that endeavor is unsuccessful. So, you know, they we know were, what... they were the, the semi, the, uh, the runners up though, because if you remember metal deer solid got eliminated first, thanks to, I think, thanks to, wasn't it Tejano getting eliminated? It... Thanks to Davari. Yeah. Yeah. Was that, was that first though? Yeah, that was, that was, I think they, they yeah, they were first eliminated. Cause then it came down to yeah, uh, kill shot yeah. pin Tejano to eliminate metal deer solid. That was in episode 24. Yeah. Yeah, um, kind of funny to think about, too, because uh, Davari helped Big Rick's team get a step closer to the trio's titles in his first ever real appearance. Yeah, I know, right? How crazy is that? Man, everything really is connected. It's crazy how that works. It's amazing. Uh, so then after they get so close to the trio's, t uh, trio's titles in the tournament, because I can speak... They uh, obviously they just come up short. And then the next time we do see Big Rick is he is assaulting Tejano on behalf of Davari, his new employer. Yes. Yeah, so we know Big Rick going back to his more heelish tendencies. Uh, you could even say that maybe he did that, too, in the trios tournament. But maybe he still, like, I don't know, had supporters, whatever. This is him full fledged heel following the money, going back to what really defined him as a character in the very beginning. Oh, under Cueto's my employee. God, John, we missed a breadcrumb that I don't know how we missed it. Do you remember that promo where the Mac is talking to Big Rick and he's just like, hey, man, where'd you get all them big faces? And Rick is counting money, and Rick's just like, make all the money while you can, because this business is going to chew you up and spit you out if you don't. 
And Mac is just like, man, you don't have to be that way. And Big Rick is just like, for the right amount of money, I'll even whip someone in my own family's ass. Do you remember that scene? Yeah, yeah. That, that happened. Completely. That happened on the episode before he showed up to help Davari. Oh, does it? He got the money yeah. from Davari. That's how he got the freaking money. Wow. Okay. Wow, that light bulb just went off and now everything's so much brighter. All right, right. then. Wow. They're crazy. I love the Lucha Underground writing staff, man. These guys are so good. Unbelievable. See, guys, like, we watched episodes 27 and 28 back to back, and we still didn't connect those dots. Uh, it's a great time, though, when you do, man. It's so rewarding. We've seen both those episodes twice now, and we didn't <laughs> connect those dots until now. Exactly. Crap. Oh, my Unbelievable. God. Unbelievable. Some Marvel Cinematic Universe up in this bitch. <laughs> right, though? Everything is connected, people. Uh, so then we get the the big, oh, Davari comes up to Rick, and he's just like, hey, man, we I, I just talked to the boss, and he told me that we get a trio's title shot tonight. And Big Rick is just like, oh, yeah, we just need to get a third. And then the Mac shows up, and then Cade shows up and just destroys the Mac. Yeah, and then Davari's enthusiastically like, "Welcome to the team." Yeah. And Big Rick's just and of course, back, like, of course, though they don't win because of Tejano. Yeah, who attacks, Tejano screws attacks him Davari again. Yeah, so that uh, that endeavor was a failure, and um, wasn't and then, too, yeah. was it was it at that point that we got the uh, the big Rick in Cueto's office scene where Cueto's just like. Lately, we haven't been seeing eye to eye. <laughs> well, yeah, because uh, D- Davari soon after he gets another one on one match with Tejano. Um, I think Big Rick accidentally forearms Davari, and Tejano capitalizes. So then Big Rick, I guess, goes off to do his own thing because you don't really hear much about that relationship. Yeah. Or actually, no, no. You know what? Wasn't it? Didn't we get that office scene with Cueto after Big Rick cost Davari one of the medallions when he lost to Bengala? Because I felt like he was yes, about to get Bengala. Yes. It was the episode after that. Yeah. Yeah, and then, like, after he calls Devore a medallion, then we see Big Rick, I guess, going into business for himself again because he realizes, man, this thing with Devore isn't working out, so. Yeah. And uh, Cueto just tossing out all the blind puns. Yeah, exactly. Like, we haven't been seeing eye to eye. You've been blinded by Devore's money. Just gold. Yeah, Cueto really uh I want to see up. an interaction between Cueto and, speaking of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, Daredevil. Yes. Oh my God, that'd be great. <laughs> Cueto. I mean, it's funny that we brought it up too because Cueto is. We even said in his episode, he is like the kingpin. Yeah, yeah. And you know what the funny thing is though is that despite all the laughing that Cueto's doing, the saying goes, "He who laughs uh, last laughs loudest." And Big Rick, I'd be like, it's the last laugh because he um, hits up Cueto both for a medallion and the money. Yeah, yeah. Just, would you Cueto's rather like, have money or would you rather have power? And Big Rick's just like, uh, why, have why do I have to choose? I can have both. Yeah, exactly. Like, why do I have to choose when I can have both? <laughs> and then Quinn is like, oh, shit, I'm getting robbed. Yep. And then, of course, he shows up for the old Aztec medallion ceremony where they put the medallions into the title. And then he's a part of the seven-way match for the actual Gift of the Gods championship in Ultima Lucha. So that's that's Big Rick's season one. We didn't go episode by episode. Uh, but we did manage to cover pretty much everything important that he did in in season one, right? Exactly. And yeah, just to, just to kind of add just a little touch up, we know in the Gift of the Gods matchup, Davari emerged and he turns on Big Rick. So that kind of opens up his plot points for season two, at least the beginning of it. Um, Man, question- I gotta tell you, I know they're, I mean, in a, in a roundabout way, since we're probably going to get Rick versus Davari, I think they're both probably going to end up being baby faces, but I really want Rick versus Tejano to happen. I would like that too. I think that would be an interesting view. Here's my thing, Ashton, because you and I were even kind of talking about this before we recorded. It's, it's difficult to see where a guy like big Rick fits in the scheme. And I'll tell you right now, and I think Lucha Underground understands this, so I'm not worried. Big Rick, I think can only work as a very, very short term baby face. He should never be babyface to me for a prolonged period of time. I just think he's more naturally a heel. He works better that way, given his motivations. So the the best thing I could come up with for him in Ultima Lucha, to be honest, he gets his stuff done with Davari. I think the end game is actually going to be Big Rick versus the Mac in Ultima Lucha. 
I think the family tension that they kind of laid the ground for in season one is going to grow uh, into something bigger in season two, because you know the Mac seems distant from Big Rick because of Big Rick's, you know, philosophy of money. Mac doesn't really seem to, you know, to use that pun eye to eye with Big Rick on that level. Here's uh, a question, John. Yeah. Do we think Big Rick is going to get a title shot to go against Mil Muertes? <sighs> I'm not. They gonna... didn't really interact at all in season one. No, they really didn't. I'm not going to shut it down. Especially because now Rick is back in Cueto's employ. Maybe Cueto will see Mil Muertes running amok and be like, look, man, I need you to do something about this guy. He's out of control. Right. That is Because that's like that point. Clash of the Titans kind of thing. Like the old, you know, unstoppable force meeting the immovable object. Especially if... Because I don't know if if you changed your mind on that episode, but I stuck with your original fantasy booking of Mil Muertes, especially if he is facing Matunza at Ultima Lucha. Big Rick could be like a good barometer, so to speak, yeah. for that. So to me, I could see that, and I think you have an excellent bridge to get there. Again, uh, Big Rick being in Cueto's employ. I'm going to be a bit more conservative, though. Go with what was already established in the first season. Yeah, I'm still going to say like that, Big Rick versus I the do, Mac. I do. I really like if they would do Rick versus the Mac at Ultima Lucha, I would be completely down for that. You know what else I would be down for, too? What's that? Rick versus Cage. Yes. Yes. Because I want to see if Cage can pull off his power stuff on a guy Rick's size. Because didn't they have a little clash or like a stare down in Aztec Warfare or something? Because there, there was no, a moment dude, those two... uh, Cage, Cage debuted on the episode after Aztec Warfare. I know those two had a stare down at some point. Maybe, it Maybe was during a trios, trios match. match? Maybe. Because, yeah, I know at some point they had a stare down. I think it actually got a good pop. So that's a match I wouldn't be opposed to at all. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, my, my formal pick... Big Rick versus the Mac. I, I, again, that's why I asked if Killshot was a family member, because honestly, I may have even gone a triple threat, just all three against each other. Yeah. But I think I think Big Rick versus the Mac is a more emotionally resonant, especially given what they've done in season one and what they could do in season two. Yep. But I love your ideas, potentially, of uh, you know him facing Cage at Ultima Lucha. Maybe they find a way to do that. Just something I think really makes it... I, see, because with Big Rick, I think you either have to strike an emotional chord, like, oh, look at this guy, he's willing to sacrifice, uh, you know, his familial bonds at the altar of money, or you make it a Haas fight, like, look at this guy going against this other brick wall. Right. Uh, that, that's really how I see Big yeah, Rick. Yeah, so like I think we streets. really did kind of narrow it down to the three best options. Uh, the Mac, for the emotional tie, like you said. Right. Cage or Mi Muertes. Yeah. Yeah, I love that, dude. I think that I think we're definitely uh, we're definitely cooking here. What do you think? I agree. I, I, there's really not much further I can go with it. I can't see Big Rick going back in the tag division. No, um, he's not. He works best solo. I think he does. He does, uh, especially because I mean, again, if, if we're being consistent unless with I will say this, let's not forget Chavo, Blue Demon, and the crew. The crew and Chavo, at least, are still working for Cueto. Yeah, that's true. I don't know if Blue Demon is going to agree to that or if maybe he's going to kind of take over as the leader of that faction. But if it ends up that all four of those guys are working for Cueto, then we've got five guys all working for Cueto because Rick is there, too, now. Yeah, that's true. I don't that, know if they're yeah. going to do anything with that or if we're going to have maybe, like, one of those five guys betray the other four and recruit a team and get like a crazy Atomicos feud or something like that. Hmm. I don't know. I think that there's some potential there. I would prefer Rick to do his own thing. I would tell. And I, I, yeah, I figured you would too, but I just wanted to throw that out there because we like to cover our bases here. We do just spotlight. Yeah. I'm, I'm really glad you did. I just feel like if we're being consistent with Rick's personality, he right. loves money and I don't think he would ever like divvying up the profits. Yeah. So this is a guy that I think wants to go in. And yeah. here's the thing too, Ashton, if we're looking at all possibilities, is there a chance he revisits the idea that Cueto ordered the hit? Because Cueto vehemently denied it. I don't know if Rick believed him or not because he got paid off and the money kind of eased his wounds. That's what I, I'm telling you, man. I think that even though you said maybe short term, I think that there's a very distinct possibility that Rick spends a majority of season two as a baby face. 
would be interesting to see him maybe not be able to pay off, be paid off for his pride because Rick was seething when he recovered from his eye being burned out. And why would you stop the rampage right when you're at the head of it? You know, because Cueto again orchestrated the hit. Right. I don't, but see, here's where, here's my conflict again. I want to believe that Rick believed Cueto, but he just let it slide because money money speaks to him more than anything else. And he right. got paid a handsome sum. Yeah. Um, but I could very easily buy, maybe he just thought, okay, I'll play along for the moment. And then you do the whole baby face, you know, run that wave by him just saying, okay, well, I'm going to exact my revenge on Cueto. And then maybe that's how you get big Rick to uh, to run into Mil Muertes. Maybe it's not because Cueto needs to take care of uh, Mil Muertes. Maybe it's because Cueto needs Mil Muertes to take care of Big Rick, and he just wants to manipulate both guys. But, uh, Cueto is a manipulator, first and foremost, so it could yeah. work either way. Um, I don't know, man. I, I will say this. If this discussion proved anything, it's that there are more avenues for Big Rick than I originally conceived, so I'm glad we had this discussion. Um, but again, would you say I, that we're uh, all out of ideas at this point though? I, I would say, yeah. And I think even with all, all right. these ideas exhausted, yeah. Are you ready it's, to drop the bomb? Yeah, let's do it. Season or well, not season episode seven of our Lucha underground luchador spotlight. Who do you think is going to be John? Hmm. We've been doing like all these people connected. I can't figure it, partner. Who's it going to be? Johnny Mundo. Oh! My God, and I already know what I'm gonna do for him. Yes, I'm so excited. That's right, people. We're we're sort of kind of branching off Big Rick with his first big rival, Johnny Mundo. They had like three or four matches to start the season, including that epic ladder match that also involved was it Puma or Phoenix? It was Puma. It was okay. Puma. Yeah, but still, uh, we're we're gonna go with Johnny Mundo. We're gonna we're gonna. We're going to travel down that road already. Episode seven out of a potential, I think, 30 something. And we're already on the Mundo train. What do you think? Guys, I know this is the one of the episodes anyway that you were looking forward to most because of, of my, you know, insanity here. I really hope you guys like what I have planned for Johnny Mundo because the Mundo Mark, I, I knew what he was going to do before this season was or this series was even a thing. So I'm really excited to unveil it to you guys. And I can't wait for this action. It's going to be awesome. He's going to unify all the championships, right? Yes, all the power. All right, guys, we'll see you all for episode seven.